Is it on? Is that a yeah? He's saying yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> my name is can I, okay. My name is Katie Stewart and I'm new here at St. Up St. Apple where, where are we? I don't know. Can we start over? I'm re I'm really sorry. Action! Scene two apple take 19 mark. Action. Hi, my name is Katie Stewart and I'm new here at St. Apollonia's school. I'm here to join St. Apollonia's players in this theater hall. Is that good? Uh, hi, are you Katie? Yeah. Hi, hi I'm Jennifer. Hi. Um, uh, I'm the stage manager here. Uh, we're having auditions inside. Why don't you come on in? Okay. Welcome to our main theater. One. Hey, Eugene. Hi. My name is Katie. I'm the new assistant director. I called to you. Oh. Hi, you're just in time. We're beginning auditions. My name is Eugene. I'm, I'm the director. Hi. Hi. So, is there anything I can do? Yes. You can sit down. Okay. I can, I can do this. What's up with the camera crew? Um... Well, my, my dad hired them to capture my best moments. Okay, uh, first up! So, what's the play? What? But what are they auditioning for? Um, n nothing. Nothing. Okay, who's first? Come on, guys! Then why are they auditioning? Um, it, it keeps morale up. You can't just have these actors audition and never contact them. That's not fair. They don't know this. They're just actors. Where's he going? Okay, come on. Who's going first, guys? These auditions need to happen. My first day here, and there's no play? This is a theater company for crying out loud. Like, there's no play. This is completely just up. Hi, I'm Brett Tyler. And today I'll be performing a few lines from the hit movie, Die Hard. So, who are you exactly? I'm the fly in the ointment. The monkey in the wrench. The pain in the ass. Whoa. Why did I pick a scene from Die Hard? Because Die Hard's awesome. And I strive to be awesome in the theater department. All those other guys, they do sports, and they strive to be awesome there. But what they don't understand is I can work just as hard at acting and be just as awesome. yippee ki yay mother See. Okay, uh, thank you, Brett. For being born, yes. Okay, who's next? I identify with John McClane because it's just like a normal guy who can walk across glass. And I think if I get good enough at acting, I can walk across glass too. Someday. Oh, oh, uh, oh God, that's a, that's a freaky. Um, he, he's not an actor. What's, what's he doing then? Uh, uh, 
Okay, uh, Frankie, that way, that way. Okay, good. Uh, he's really nice, and he's really smart, and always trying to help others. He's just, like, not there, and sometimes in conversations he just stops responding. I don't know, he's, he's weird. So I'm supposed to talk about myself. I spend most of my time under the theater. I, there's not usually anyone down there, so I just like to look at the, the, the bugs. Oh, and uh, there's my my friends, my, my rock friends. There's, um, there's seven in total. It makes a nice little happy family. They're, they're very happy together. They separated once, but they worked it out because they love each other and their children. And me. They accept me as one of their own. I love my rock friends, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Hi, I'm Nora Harrington, and I'll be performing a monologue from Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Nora, if there is a God in heaven, and I do believe there is, then he is not going to make us watch The Crucible again. Amen. Uh, but I don't have anything else prepared. Well, I don't know. Make up a novel, read a short story, I don't care, do a history lesson, just do something else other than the crucible. Uh -huh. In World War II, the Nazis were invading Italy. And, and in Mississippi, there was this rogue fighter pilot named Named, named Dick Steele, and Dick Steele, now he, did she just say Dick? flew to Italy, and he had orders from his, his professional general, um, general, General Benjamin Button, and he, he was supposed to go to Italy, and only fly in with his, pilots and and save one town but instead of one town he saved three towns and when he went to the third town he saw this this woman and he fell in love with her and she kind of looked like Frida Kahlo and uh he he then took his Frida Kahlo woman and they flew together out of Italy to Monaco and in Monaco they they, they, they beat more Nazis and picked up the Nazis and flew them back home to Germany and won the war for America and, and, the end. I want to be the best. I mean, I'm already the best actress here, but I want more than that. When I was five, I was the dance captain at Happy Feet Dance Studio, and I learned all the choreography from a chorus line in three and a half hours. I'm also in student government. I started a campaign for the charge of locker use. I mean, we need to save the economy of this dying school. We just can't be giving out free handouts all the time. I mean, but if we act like law enforcement, they will think we're law enforcement because it will be illegal not to. Okay, um, Teresa, we don't want to hear your rendition of Wrecking Ball, so if you could do something else, please. But Gaston Lavoche did it très bon. It's got harmonies written in. Do you sing soprano? Okay, well, if you don't have monologue, can you please get off the stage? What are you doing? Unleashing the power of Kali upon you. You, um, you gave me an anti-curse amulet last week, so... Damn. Hi, my name is Teresa. I, I guess 
I'm very spiritual. I, I traveled to India last year and that was, that was really eye-opening experience. I, I just believe in relationships and just how things work together in the earth and you, you could say, no you could, maybe, I'm Hindu? No. Yes. Buddhist? Kind of. Spiritual. Hello, my name is Jay Tender, and I will be reciting a monologue from William Shakespeare's Mep. The Scottish play. <sighs> she should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. Okay, uh, thank you, Jay, for coming. No, our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow. Tis a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Whew. Thank you. All right, that was great. Thank you so much for coming out, Jay. Oh. I once worked with Steven Spielberg, uh, as an extra, of course, but um, one time he told me that if I went to get him coffee, he would give me a line. So, of course, I went to go get him coffee, and um, I, I got him coffee, and when I came back, some men in black suits wouldn't let me see him. They told me to leave the premises. Um, so, being the uh, faithful coffee carrier I was, I fought my way past the Hollywood security guards, and I ultimately got Steven's um, signature on a restraining order, and my, my part was cut from the film, but I, I forgave him. Hello, my name is Zach Fisher. Okay, Zach, I, I've known you since kindergarten. And I'm in 11th grade here at St. Apollonia. Okay, uh, what have you prepared for us? I didn't prepare a monologue, so I'm going to wing this. So this morning, when I woke up, I slipped, and I fell, and I knocked my water over that was on my bedside table. So I had to pick it up, and well, I slipped again, because it was wet, and I got my socks wet. I slipped, and I fell out the window into a bush. There were some bees in there, which is weird, because it's fall. There aren't usually too many bees around in the fall time, but there were bumblebees, so I didn't get stung. So I heard this as remedy for painful butts. You basically take some orange zest, you can mix in some other stuff, I don't know. I just use straight orange zest. This is what I read on the internet. I don't know. Anyway, it didn't work at all. It still hurts. But back to my story. I walked past 7-Eleven. I wasn't sure they'd have socks. I feel like that might be a commodity they should tr start like selling. So that was annoying. So I had to go to my friend who owns a he owns a thrift shop. He gives me all my cool stuff. I bought a dongle from there the other day. That's a funny word. Dongle. Anyway. I got my socks and I came home and I cleaned up the water. That was the best decision I've made. Cleaning that up so I don't slip the next morning. I would hate if that happened. So is that Wait, why do you not have a monologue prepared? Because I didn't have any socks. Yeah, that was completely planned. Well, I heard that the auditions went very well. Of course, the actors don't know that there's no play, and I intend to keep it that way. Jay, I really don't think you can pull off why not? pink tuxedos. Why not? Because you're not Neil Patrick Harris. I am Neil Patrick Harris. Look at me. Look. Hey, Jay, Nora, hi. So this is Katie, she's the new assistant director. Hi, Katie, I'm Jay, and she's a non-believer. You uh, don't want to talk to her. Uh, anyway, the point is, I could no. totally pull off a pink No, 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 the answer I? is yes. no, come on. The answer is yes. Um, yeah, I really doubt it. But, you know, I'd really, I'd actually really like to see it, you know, just to be sure, because I don't know how the body works. Challenge accepted. Oh, God. Jay, Jay, where are you gonna get a pink tuxedo? I know a guy. Is this normal?
longer? Yes. Hey guys, so I know that you guys don't really know me, but my name is Katie and I'm the new assistant director. You already told us. Sorry? You sent us an email, you already told us. Yeah, yeah I did. You also hey, forgot a comma. What? In the email, after you said, though I am new here, that's a dependent clause and needs a comma. Okay, everyone. We don't have a play. So, we need a play, and people to put on the play. So, let's, let's start with that. Does, that. does anyone know any people? Actors? Cat? Lighting? Costumes. So no one knows anyone. All right, guys, you can't really help me out here. I, I just need some cooperation. Who are you to be telling us to cooperate? Do we even know you? My name is Katie. That's why I sent the email. Who put you in charge? You know what? Fine. I'm sorry I even bothered. My name is um, Charles Spitzer. I've been teaching at St. Apollonia's School for 15 years and I've been headmaster for six of those. St. Apollonia was the patron saint of dentists and um, she burned herself uh, alive in order to avoid being persecuted as a Christian. I think it's important that we remember her sacrifice because just as she burned herself whole, we celebrate the, the whole child. We believe in educating the whole child, and it's important also to, <laughs> to remember to support your local dentist. Unfortunately, our theatre company, the St. Apollonia Players, uh, whom I evidently support completely, you see, here at St. Apollonia's we strive to support the arts as thoroughly as we support the sports. Excuse um, me, how much is the arts budget for this year? The arts <laughs> budget, well, uh, you see, that's not really the, the, the issue. As I was saying, the, um, the theatre department hasn't put on a production here in a very long time. We just don't have the budget to continue this theatre company. So, uh, we're going to have to shut it down and put the building to, <laughs> to better use. Unless they put on a play in the next few months. As I was just telling Mr. Eugene Clark, the, uh, the man with the earring, I'm sorry, but he wasn't very understanding. Mm. So, um, well, this is just the way it has to be, and it's what St. Apollonia would do. Well, it looks like you picked a bad time to come, young lady. What do you mean? Well, I just talked to Principal What's-His-Face, and he's shutting us down unless we can put on the, a play. Well, why don't we put on a play? Because if, even if we could afford the rights, we don't have enough personnel to do this. We would need to hire the set designer, we would need to hire lighting designer, we would need to hire set carpenters, we would need to hire lighting technicians, audio technicians. It's, it's just, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna happen. How can you just give up like that? Easily. a terrible day. You know what? This company has no motivation and, and they're cutting the theater program because of funding. I don't even know what they do with this building anyways. A warehouse. It, it would be a, a storage warehouse. I mean, that's, um, that's all we can afford. Regardless, I don't, I don't know why I'm trying anymore. You know, it just, it just it doesn't seem worth it. Hey Eugene, what's the plan for this season? There is no plan. What do you mean there's no plan? We're not going to put on a play. They're going to close down the theater department. Well, well, can't you do something? 
there's nothing I can do. We don't have the money or the resources to put on a play. I'm sorry. Guys, Nora's here. Right. I know Eugene has a hearing, but he's a dude. No, Katie. She was right. Eugene bailed on us. Should have listened to her. Um, I think we should go apologize to Katie. Oh, I mean, if Nora thinks we should apologize, we should definitely do it. Oh. Katie! Hey, hey, Katie! Katie! Hey. Have not worked at this theater since the fifth grade to see it shut down by one lazy director. We should go to a different company. I completely agree. Or, or, let's just go to Broadway. I like it. We're obviously good enough. But we need money. Yeah. I prefer to say that I'm theirs. Are those your bugs? Yes. Do you feed them? They feed themselves. Why is that bug all alone? She's new here. I just found her this morning. What's gonna happen to her? It's like geese. I'm really sorry about the actors down there. They can be such, you know, actors sometimes. It's okay, thanks. You know, I think it's really amazing that you're so dedicated to something you've only been a part of for a day. I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, but I've always had trouble, like, making friends. And in the theater, it was different, so it was easier. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I guess I was wrong. Well, no! We just have to give them some time. They're gonna warm up to you, I promise. I'm never gonna make it south! What? The new bug is like a new goose. See, geese travel south for the winter as a flock. They take turns leading in front to protect the others. It's all up to that new bug. It has to conform to the rest of the society, but that means eating new foods, having new actions, meeting others. If it can't lead, then the flock will collapse, and they'll all die, and they'll never make it south, ever. See, I'm that new bug. I, I'm different and I can't act like the other bugs. And that's, I'm never gonna make it south. That's why I'm not gonna make it south. Because I'm a different bug. I'm new, I'm different. I'm a different bug. Make it south? Have you ever seen geese fly? It's just follow the leader. It's a multi-thousand mile game of follow the leader. They just fly in a V. And you know what else flies in the V? Fighter jets. They fly behind each other to save fuel. And that's what Dick Steele did. You know Dick Steele from Nor's monologue? The fighter jet pilot from World War II? Well, he was brave, and you can be brave too. You know what that means? Guys with really sexual names make awesome leaders? <laughs> no! You're gonna be our Dick Steele. You're gonna make the right call and help us. I know I've only been here for a little bit, but I, 
I think I'm, I have an idea that could save the theater. <laughs> that could save the theater! Thank you. Okay, my idea is that we will all together write and put on our own original play. Okay, before you trash the idea, just think about it. How did I enjoy my first day? Well, I, I like it. It's been a little weird, but like the good weird. I don't know, it's like when you have a passion for something, it, it just becomes your life. It's like an obsession, except like in a good way. It's like knowing you have meaning somewhere, even if you don't anywhere else. But yeah, it's nice to be in the theater again, no matter where it is. But I. I think I'm gonna like it here. Thank <laughs> you. 